Okay, um, welcome everybody to another little bit of a get together with the subscribers, answering your questions and boosting your create a PC build. Now, let me know if you can hear me all right out loud. There is a bit of a latency, so about 20 seconds latency, what I can see live and what I'm seeing here, just so you know. Um, let me know if you guys can hear it all right and if it's all good. Uh, so I'm going to have to wait when this latency gets in and you can actually hear what I just said. Okay, we have Steve from Southern California. We have Alan from Scotland. Jeremy, where are you watching, Jeremy? Quairix, Rando. Nice to see you all there. Let's see if I can see the comments here. Yes. Okay. Very good. Everyone can hear me? Okay, okay, okay. Let's see. Greetings from Southern California. Okay. I'm just trying out a little bit of different uh, streaming software, a different streaming place here as well. New England, Brian. Nice one. So what we're going to be doing here is going to be answering a few questions. And just so you know, if you don't know how this is going to go already, I'm going to do it a little bit differently this time. We're going to actually bring in some of you guys here live if you are up for it. And if you don't know how this works, check out the pinned comment already on the chats. So you can see that uh, if you do have some kind of, let's say, build feedback and your question is very long and you want really um, kind of a customized way of answering this you know, question, it's not just like, which is better, 13600K or 700K or what's this, then we can have a chat to hear. And I've got Alex there on the studio already. Alex, we're going to get to you in a moment. Um, we're going to see if we're going to talk to Alex. I've never met Alex before. Alex is probably a subscriber. I'm hoping he is. And we're going to talk about, about his build in a moment and going to give some feedback for him, any questions he might have. So if you want that as well, there is an email link. I'm going to get the email out here so you can uh, I can check uh, the emails while we're up here live. So send me an email with the questions, right? We're not going to have any... If, if you've got a build feedback or something like that, send me a quick thing. Look, I'm going to... I ask a question about that. I need to know like how to do this. Don't make it super long because I can't re read the whole email live here. But just to quickly look, this is what it's about. I want to do this. I'm from here. Uh, I'd love to have a chat. And then we can make this happen. Will we be talking about laptops today? Jeremy, whatever you want to talk about, we can talk about. But I've got a few ideas there that we'll talk about here as well. So we're going to see if Alex is live here as well. OK, Alex, can you hear me? Let yes, hello. Hi. Thanks for having One me. Second, let me. Hi, Alex. How are you doing? Hi. Yes, I'm let fine. me see um, what people are. Oh, very nice. So let me get layout. We're going to get Alex side by side. There we go. Um, I can see you, and uh, hopefully, you can see me as well. Yeah. Okay. I'll, can you hear me I'll all right? Yeah, yeah. I'll try to keep this short because there are a lot of people that are waiting. Um, I have three short questions. First is, is the Noctua NH-D15, mm -hmm. which is their best um, cooler, air cooler, is it enough for the 13900K? Uh, very good question. First of all, um, is it the best air cooler? That's uh, questionable. If you have seen Hardware Canucks video about that, um, they have a video where they test some of the best air coolers. I'll find it out here. And then if you're not particularly bothered about the design, but Nocto is known as like one of the best air coolers. But um, let me see hardware. No, I, I don't care uh, about uh, the design Canucks, or anything like air... that. Only performance. Okay, performance. Let me see where is the best CPU cooler, air coolers right now. Okay, there we go. Uh, I'll just get that one up so people can see this as well. Okay. Can you see this on the screen? They've yeah. got uh, this video, best air coolers live. So they test some of their things, which is there's also thermal right, um, peerless assassin in there. I've got it there as well, finally, um, actually, so we can test it in some of the uh, videos there as well. But worth checking out that video just so you have an idea, like maybe you want to go with a different cooler because some of them... Um, out of certain dB or decibel actual rating, they perform a little bit better. 
because Noctua keeps it quite quiet, but some of them go a little bit louder but have more performance. Secondly, can it air cool the 13900K? And the question is yes. I mean, the answer is yes and no, because if you let the multi-core enhancement, then BIOS just absolutely go mental with the uh, PL2 limits, then it can call, uh, pull up to like 300 plus watts and like no air, even liquid coolers can't keep up with it. But if you keep it within the Intel specification, then take that one off. You're only going to lose multi-core performance a few percent there, okay. which for creators doesn't mean you know a lot. It's, it's able to cool it down, no problem. All right, thanks. Uh, second question would be about the Asus Z790 ProArt, the, the newest uh, ProArt motherboard. Mm -hmm. um, can I use Corsair Vengeance memory that's not on the QVL on the verified list? Um, is it DDR5? Yes, DDR5. Um, yeah. Um... Should I worry that it's it's, it's, not on the it's a bit of a well? I think um, yes and no. What I would do is um, I would just um, if you if you have Amazon in Romania, what you can or some like local shop it, that have good returns, uh, buy it, test it, and then if it doesn't work, send it back and make sure that your BIOS is up to date as well because they often they update this like. I'll very very quickly what uh, um frequency is that ram uh, five uh, six uh, double o's five thousand six hundred okay and 5, I, don't 600. Want, I don't want to enable yeah XMP. it's i think it's okay uh, well in order to actually get the 5600 you will have to enable xmp because on default it will run at 4800 or 4000 megahertz if you want a default 5600 uh, RAM, you'll have to get one of the crucial kits uh, that uh, don't have XMP. It's just a basic, uh, there's a name for it, a something. So basically the, the RAM will run just gear one without XMP with your memory controller and the CPU, but you don't really uh, get non XMP, like crucial ventions. It will have XMP to run at 5600, if you know what I mean. Okay, did we lose Alex? Okay, uh, while we're waiting for Alex to come back, um, Alan is saying, do you think a 3900K is worth extra over the 13900K? Well, price to performance, definitely not. Like you get extra, uh, like one single handed performance there over uh, the 13900K, but if you want to um, get the best CPU, for example, then the 3900K S is the one to get. But here's the tip. If you want to go with a gigabyte board, gigabyte Z690 or Z790, then you can get 3900K S performance with the 13900K by just um, enabling the six instant six gigahertz. Sorry, Alan. Alex, here we are. You're back. Yeah, now. sorry for that. Um, uh, internet problems. Uh, one last question. Uh, mm -hmm. For Photoshop and Illustrator work, if, if I get the 3900K with mm -hmm. 64 gigabytes of RAM, mm -hmm. uh, can I get a lower uh, NVIDIA card like the upcoming 4060 or do I need to go higher than 4060 for uh, two-dimensional two work, no 3D? Oh, you don't need a, a graphics card pretty much at all. You can go with 3050. I've got a 3050 over here. I'm doing some uh, export testing. Um, and that will be like plenty of power for Photoshop and Lightroom work. You won't get any performance increase going on 3050 to 4090. You'd get maybe 3% in some of the Photoshop applications. It's absolutely not worth it as a photo uh, editor. Right. Well, I want to thank you very much for this opportunity and for the answers you've given me, and I'll uh, continue being your subscriber. Oh, thanks very much. Nice. Thanks for having you on. Thanks a lot. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Okay. This was uh, good. So basically, if you guys do want to do and come live like that, 
you can do that right now. Send me an email. I can see um, Huarix, Huarix is there next. I'm just going to answer a few of the questions here live so we can have a look at what's, what's going on uh, with some of these questions. Let's see. Um, any approach on how to build a DDR5 system with 128 gigs of RAM and have a decent speed? So here's the thing. If you um, let me find this in here, crucial, um, crucial, crucial. Where is um, crucial released recently? Uh, basically, like the base DDR5 spec kit where oh come on now where you can get 128 gigabytes without an xmp um ddr5 let me see if i can find it so i can show it to you uh ta -ta -ta -ta. okay the site is down right now something's going on basically um that way you can have xmp well, well like 5600 megatransfers per second like one-on-one -on -one with the imc integrated memory controller and the ram speed will be just the same there's no like overclocking of the memory the memory will just run at that speed and that's like the best way of doing it 32 uh, gig modules so four of them boom in there and they will run 5600 uh, megatransfers per second and that's should be okay that's that's what i would go or depends if you don't want like i mean if you go with the 13th gen like 13900k you might be able to run like any kit pretty much with 5600 mega transfers per second silicon lottery you know but that's it uh Huerix, two seconds i will send you a link and then you can get in okay Um, Huerix, uh, just check your email box now. You should be getting in now. Um, the answer, Taro, is a no. Don't, um, don't overclock it. Huerix, just uh, follow the link on your email and then you can come in. Do, 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 do. Okay, this is a good question here. I have my 12900K cinch launch, and is it worth upgrading to a 13900K KS? Mainly photo editing, Lightroom Classic, and Photoshop is what I use. I have a Z690 Maximus, 64 gigs of DDR5, 5600, and a 3090Ti. I mean, goodness me, first of all, for what you're doing, Photoshop, Lightroom Classic, your GPU is a massive overkill already, and you'd see maybe... Um, maximum a 10 percent increase in there i wouldn't i wouldn't upgrade it i don't think this is worth it keep this system for a few years until i well unless you're doing a lot of batch exporting on converting in lightroom classic then that would like kind of work better there but you know um luca um I can see that you don't have your camera on, so I can't see your camera and that. Yeah, come on back on. If you can put your camera and microphone on, then we can have you on the chat. Okay, the ARC is great for 4K video editing on DaVinci Resolve. Yes, Arc is supported now on DaVinci Resolve, not yet on Premiere Pro, but that's that. Okay, we're gonna get Luca on. Hello. There we go. Hello, can you okay. hear me? Okay, hello Luca, can Hi. you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. How are you doing? Okay, brilliant. Yeah, I'm good, how are you? Oh, very great. Um, I want to... He gets. Uh, he gets? You good. have a... Uh, quick look on my upcoming pc build if that is okay yeah that sounds good let's go for it uh have you ever heard about uh the site guide sites so it's a price comparison site from germany um no i don't think i have maybe Wait, i'll send you the link okay to my 
wish list. Hold on a second, I have to make it. So. There's people watching from Philippines. Nice to see you all. And by the way, Chad, like the stream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like the stream, everybody. Hit that like button. Okay. So let me see if I've got your email now. It's not come through yet. Um, all righty. Okay. We'll get this one. Looking at build, building a creator PC based on your recent Bank for Bark 1522 video, is it worth upgrading the RAM to DDR5 and the motherboard if I have the budget? Um, yes. If you, if you can, um, and if you want to future-proof yourself a little bit, um, you can get to DDR5. But the thing is, you won't get as much performance boost than upgrading the CPU, for example. I'm not sure what you do exactly, just, but if you are doing photo editing or video editing, then upgrading the, the CPU probably will get better performance. Although DDR5 will get better export speeds, but that's that. Um, Luca, I don't see the email yet. Do you mind sending me this again? It's not come through or... Yeah, send, send it in the chat, in the chat, in uh, this ah. website. Uh, send it on my email if you don't mind, uh, because yeah, I no think problem. I might have lost it on the... Uh... No, oh, yeah, I got, in, I got it. I got it. Yeah. Sorry, it's on the chat here. I got it. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it. Perfect. Okay, I'll just open it and let's... Oh, and by up. the way, if you want to um, compare prices from Europe, uh, mm -hmm. I would strongly suggest you using that side, because you. Uh, I one time asked you about a good budget Z690 board, and mm -hmm. you said something about Gigabyte DH3S, um, mm -hmm. it, which is for under $200, but actually here in Germany on whole Europe is 240 euros. Whoa, that is crazy. Yeah. Okay, so I can see your build over here now. Let me... Um... Let me get it up on here so people can see it as well. Two seconds. All righty. So that, there we go. Uh, okay. Let's see. Um, I'm going to put this as this one. So whenever whoever's talking should be able to see what we have over here so your budget is about 2.5 2.5k yeah. okay 13600k 30 ddr4 bny rtx 4080 very good gigabyte z790 gaming x big high pew wings fan the case is going to be a different one by the way this is Armin z10 but they don't have it on this side. Yeah. Okay. Be quiet. 850 watts. All right. Well, I guess, yeah, that will do. Um, This is 3.0. Very good. You've uh, managed to do all that. That's very good. 4,000 deep. That's good. Deep cool. That's quite good price there as well. It looks nice as well, that AK620. Yeah. Uh, that looks... Very good. Is that DDR4? Look at this motherboard. It's actually DDR5 motherboard here. Is it? It's only DDR5? Um, so looks like if you go with this motherboard, you'll have to go with DDR5 um, RAM. So that's like a little trippy up thing yeah. that people I might can... have... Hold on. Hold on. Um, yeah, there right. might it's be a only DDR5. If there is, if you want a DDR4 motherboard, I um, have like the um, Z690 version of that also in the budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so it's a 250 euros. Um, let's have a look at what can we get. Z690 DDR4 <laughs> Gaming X. There looks like that's yeah. coming up. Um, what else can we see here? 150. Let's see. Z Asus, okay, two five. And what's also what's important, important to me, for you? Um, mm -hmm. That it has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth because I don't have an Ethernet connection here. Yeah, okay, very good. Okay, that's expensive. MSI. Oh, also looked at, at on the Tamahawk. Yeah, looked about that's, that. That's, that. Obviously, that's a little bit more expensive. Yeah. 
than what you have there. Let me um, sort by price. Oh my goodness. Uh, is there a price that I can put, let's say 170 minimum? Gigabyte set 690 prime. That could be pretty good. Let's see if that one has. No, it doesn't. The connectivity should. Yeah, I've already looked through a lot of main boards. I mean, this planning took me like one one month. That's the no. thing when you have with different uh, countries have some things different prices. Yeah. So that's why it's good always to have, um, you know, like have a look at your current wherever you are from. But actually, let me let me do something like this. If I go to Amazon, um, all right, uh, continue. Let's have a look at Z. 790 DDR4. What can we? You can, by the way, filter on guide cells what you want. Like, you want DDR4, DDR5, uh, how much M.2 slots you want to have, like mm -hmm. how much USB ports you want to have on the back. You can all filter that out on this side. Well, this actually. is pretty good here as well. The MSI, look, this is 250. You've got Wi Fi and Bluetooth built in. Uh, this is DDR4 now. Um, and you've got one, two, three, four M.2 slots. They're all Gen 4 capable later on if you want to upgrade. 2.5 gig LAN, um, even 20 gigabits per seed um, USB-C. So that's pretty good. Pretty good board, I think, worth looking into. But I think you've, got, you've done quite good uh, already optimization there. Uh, where's it gone now? Uh, on your... On your system, the Gen 4, one terabyte, two terabyte. I mean, this is very, very good. And that PNY, I know this Verto uh, is very good, like price as well. And um, probably one of the best RTX 4080s there. So what are you planning to do? Uh, video editing? Um, yeah, like video editing, maybe something Unreal Engine, animating, 3D modeling, mm -hmm. stuff like very that. Very nice. And what programs? DaVinci or Premiere uh, DaVinci Resolve. Um, like in Unreal Engine, I would like to like mm -hmm. animate. Yeah. Um, yeah, just um, make sure that you do have the studio version of DaVinci Resolve. Yeah. Um, uh, because otherwise you won't be able to uh, utilize a lot of the RTX 40, uh, not 80 hardware there, what you'd have. Anyway. Uh, do you have yeah. any other questions? Can I help no, any other way? I think that is it. Is I know good. that a lot of people um, are waiting, and yeah, I don't want to hold them up. Okay, thanks very much. <sighs> yeah, thank you for the opportunity. No problem. Okay, catch you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye. And by the way, okay, let's have a look at what uh, what questions do we have here. Da, 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 da. Bolo, hidden gem of a site. Okay. Um, while maybe some questions are coming in, if you want to tag me at Tech Notice as well, by the way. Okay, Oasis. Thank you very much for tagging that one. Um, 10400F versus 12100F. I don't go with an F version, first of all, Jeremy. Um, not worth doing that. Hey, Wade. Nice to see you here. Okay. Um, all righty. Let me get some of these uh, comments out that people had from last time because there's quite a few comments out there. Okay. So... First of all, Keith Treason, uh, you are absolute legend for providing all these timestamps from last week's. Was it last week or the week before's live stream? Look at all of these timestamps. This guy, honestly, if, if you can, just go and give him a like or something. This is insane stuff that he's done. Let's have a look at... Um,
so here's here's another question that I see a lot of people um, kind of say here. Um, IGPU play, you said in your video that IGPU play an important role in Premiere Pro and from where I come from, prices of i5 11400 is similar to i5 12400F, whereas 12400 is about $60 more. So I was wondering whether I should go with 11400 or 12400F would be great if you answered this. So the 12400 has got pretty much the same iGPU as the 11400. Um, and I think the iGPU is very, very important. And because you'll get insane playback for, for this. Yeah, thanks for that, Alexa. Um, so I would go with 11400 just because you'll get insane performance boosts in there. Issue saying M2 Mac Mini have slow SSD. Does it affect music production in some ways? But just use an external SSD or something like that. That um, I've made a video about today. But obviously, who knows when this is going to come out? But it's uh, it's all right. It doesn't affect it that much. Only if if you're really pegging it. But not really. I would say not really. Okay. Um, let's see. Any other questions? MSI Z690 Tomahawk versus MSI Z690 Edge. Wade is saying. Tomahawk versus Edge. Um, okay. This is good. Well, both of them seem to be ddr5 motherboards now i don't know exactly the connectivity from both but they're both like all right i think the edge looks nicer to me if you like that design and i think it's more expensive as well if i'm not mistaken but honestly both of them work really really great uh, but, but, um, if I want to do a lot of creative work, DaVinci and Photoshop, will the 7600 be enough or would I get a significant improvement if I use a 7700X? Are you going AMD build if you don't or if you haven't built or bought the motherboard yet? Try to go with 13600K because that will be better in, than both of them. That will be insane. So um, let's see if we can get another person on the call here. Now we've got okay. Marius, let's see if you are next now. Let's see if he can join there. Uh budget motherboard for core i7 12700, depending where you're from, but the gigabyte B660 M. Uh, DS3H motherboard is quite good option for that. Which motherboard brand is more durable? Um, honestly, this is very hard to do because no one really has the data on that. But what I'd really usually go for is try to go with not the motherboard brand, but some of the higher end models. So each brand has a little bit of higher end models. If you compare lower end to another's high end, they're completely different. Uh, but I really like the ProArt motherboards. They are one of the best. And uh, one second here. So Frame Moments is saying uh, tech, uh, 39 inch, 99% sRGB versus 27 inch, 100% sRGB. I would go with a 32 inch any day just because of the big real estate, the way I'm working with video production and editing. Um, that's that. Um, I'm going to get Timothy here as well. See if who comes to the live stream first. Okay. Da, 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 da. Best air cooler for 13900K. Um, we did talk about this with Alex in the first part of this video, but 
I'd say Z790 Pro out. Oh, sorry, coolers, 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 coolers. Uh, NHD 15 and uh, Timothy Chang. Yeah, have a look at your email. I've answered both of these. You can join the live stream if you uh, check the actual live stream. Okay, Marius, there we go. Live Marius is going coming on and now, and then we can keep chatting. Okay. Marius, can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you well. How's it going? Nice. I am fine. I just Good. recently found you on YouTube, so thank you so much for what you're doing. It's awesome. I like it. Oh, thanks for uh, subscribing. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, I, so, I also just wanted to know in general, um, mm -hmm. you recently just said like the CPU is not that great and the prices from the video are just insane. Mm -hmm. I also mainly do video editing and I just want mm -hmm. to find like a good uh, computer. I don't really care about gaming. Mm -hmm. um, like which one would you recommend? I don't really care about the budget, but I'm also not willing to pay, I don't know, 1,200 or 400 for a CPU if I don't really need it. Like, mm -hmm. what would you recommend as a CPU? Like, and yeah, that's one of my questions. Okay, that's a very good question because often people say that, okay, what's the best CPU for video editing? Um, and then sometimes they come to me and say, look, I've got really high-end CPU, but I can't edit this because different CPU parts work with different codecs. So my co first question for you is, what's, what's your like usual workflow? Do you edit raw? What type of cameras you use? Do you convert it? Do you use like um, recorders, Atmos Ninja or something like that? What's the codecs you're using when video editing? Yeah, it's mostly Premiere Pro and just like normal HD, maximum to 4K because that's the normal business, right? Sometimes I edit like red camera footage, which is like really high, but yeah, it's I, I don't know when it goes up to 6 or 8K, but I don't think in the future it changes that much. So primarily okay. up to 4K or HD. Okay. Um, is it H.265, like mirrorless camera fo footage, something like that? or? Yeah, yeah, it's H.264. 264, yeah, 264. Okay. okay, then probably the best one would be Intel i9-13900K. This is probably around 600, 700 euros, something like that, maybe a little bit more expensive. Are you watching from Germany? Is that? Yeah, you're exactly, yeah. Okay, so I don't know. Let's, yeah, let's have a look. I, I thought about the Intel i7-1300, uh, 700 or 600 is. Yeah, the yeah. uh, 13700K is very, very good as well. Uh, it's it's 300 400 something like that and uh, but the interesting thing is when we jumped um i'm not sure if you've seen my i5 versus i7 versus i9 comparison um when i did the premiere pro comparison if i remember correctly the i from i5 to i7 there wasn't as much of a performance jump from i7 to i9 which is interesting so if you really want like the best cpu for video editing the 13900k is like insane 24 cores um but the 13700 yeah. is very very good as well so i would i would go with that one but premiere pro in terms of um like gpu for it i would say that you would have um rtx 4080 if you are capped by vram what 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 GPU are you running right now? Uh, I think it's a. I still work with a laptop, so um, okay. I think it's a one sixty eighty Ti or. or okay, yeah. so so I think uh, a very good one would then be either RTX forty seventy Ti or forty eighty, depending on the project and VRAM. Because what I have found is I often capped the the performance of like video editing by my VRAM. When I'm doing some of the multicam edits, it starts to use a lot of VRAM. So eight gigabytes wasn't enough. But then the next 12 gigabyte cards, the cheapest one actually right now, I'm not sure about the German prices, but what I can see here in the UK and US is RTX 4070 Ti, which would be the best performance what you could get. And then if you want a little bit more, I'd go with RTX 4080, which is 16 gigs of, of VRAM. All the previous ones like 4, 3090 and all the previous generation cards, right now for some reason they're more expensive than like the yeah. newer ones so they don't actually make sense in terms of what you get for it 
Yeah. The only issue is because I also saw your Fractal North video. I love the design, so I had to get that case. I'm building, mm -hmm. a, I'm building a new desk, like like a wooden desk. It looks super nice, and there the Fractal North fits super nice. So yeah, and the only issue is it's like pretty small. So mm -hmm. like any uh, GPU which is over like 300 millimeters might cause mm -hmm. troubles, right? So yeah, yeah. If if I want then the the 4080, it's like 1,400 euros here in in Germany. If I get the Founders Edition, right, it's not even 1,200, yeah. which is like the suggested price. Or the video before me mm -hmm. uh, is gonna buy it for that price. So I even have to pay 200 euros more. And I don't know, prices yeah. right now it's insane. And the more videos I watch, the more people I see which are annoyed about the prices, and they're saying, "Don't buy it, don't support it." So I don't know what to do. But you're also saying maybe. The, um, the 47 Ti or the 4080, yeah. Yeah, so. if, if if you go with the Fractal North case, um, the thing is, it's you have to go air cooling in order to fit some of the like GPUs in. If you've seen my Fractal North build, you yeah. see like it was literally like that much on the end, and then it just fit in there. But that's like not even the biggest RTX 3080 cards, 4080. Sorry. So go with the 4070. It's slightly smaller. Um, I don't have them in the hand right now, but they would fit in there. Uh, and I think you'll you'll see insane performance in your video editing because you only need like the some of the lumetric color and some of the effects will be accelerated on Premiere Pro. But what you want to see is like the Intel quick sync from the CPU and the CPU power that will give you huge performance. Yeah, I think though an AOI cooler looks better in that fractal north. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I still have to decide. But thank you so much for answering. Like no I, problem. I still didn't want to buy the 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 graphic cards, the forty eighty and the forty seven Ti. But as you said, probably it's it's the best, and the others doesn't make sense because also those prices uh, rose up. And yeah, maybe just get like a really high end and then keep it for the next five six years. Yeah, yeah, that's that's depends. You know how much your budget is right now, but definitely go Intel thirteen seven hundred or thirteen nine hundred. That will be the best one. Yeah, okay. Thank you so much. No problem. Michael Wolf yeah. is saying there that Fractal North has 355 millimeter space for the GPU. Yes. Yeah, but only if you don't put the ARI in the front, right? So I, I might want to do that. So, and then it's shorter. Yeah, that's so, true. Yeah. You can mount that's the AIO on the side if you get the mesh version. That's true. But yeah, it's really, it. you'll have to go vertical GPU then as well. But I think you'll start to sandwich everything quite together there. And if you ever want to use any of the expansion card slots on the motherboards, um, you can't use them because your GPU will be there. So I'd go with just normal like that. But anyway, yeah. thanks, Marius. I, I bought the glass version because I like the looks yeah. and it has to look good, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Thank you so much for, for what you're doing. I enjoy it. And have, um, goodbye. No problem. Thanks for coming. Catch bye -bye. you soon. Bye-bye. Does more RGB case fans consume power? Yes, it does. Everything lighting, it adds extra 5 volts. And yes, it does consume more power. Does it cost loads more? Not really. Just a maybe a few dollars a year maximum. So here we go. Is 12400 versus Ryzen 7, 2700 versus Ryzen 536, and which one should I choose for H.264, 1080p, light, 4K video editing in Premiere Pro? 10400, 10, no question there, definitely. Intel Quick Sync is so much better uh, for there. No problem. So let's have a look. What do we have here? Cod Zero is saying 3400 and uh, RTX 3060, good combo. That's pretty good combo. Try to stretch it to 13500 if you can, because then you'll get the full iGPU in there. The 13400 only has one media engine, but the 13500 has the full media engine that you have any of the like. 600k 700k 900k so that will be like ideal okay mark h is saying has asus firmware update for ddr5 use 4.6 yet 
Um, so this is a little bit of a difficult kind of answer or, or question because this is not just about the motherboard BIOS. Um, I've done a lot of research ever since you've seen uh, my video. You've probably seen the four sticks of RAM video, but basically it also matters about your memory controller on the CPU, silicon lottery, in terms of like how good is the memory controller on the CPU, and then what RAM sticks are you using, for example, and so on. So it's not just about the like um, BIOS on the ASUS firmware. It's it's about loads of different things. I've actually made an interview with one of the ASUS product managers um, who talks. We've done like a full on um, DDR5 guide and thing with it. Like it's in the editing queue. It's coming out. But the short story is there's lots of different things that affect the performance of four sticks XMP. It's not just the motherboard BIOS update. Um, main thing is your CPU in there because 13th gen has much better memory controller than the 12th gen Intel CPUs, for example, and much better than the Ryzen 7000 right now. And then we have you know, even RAM sticks, depending which IC you're using in there um, on the RAM sticks, you know, whether it's Crucial, Samsung, uh, SK Hynix, you know, um, sorry, Micron, SK Hynix, Samsung, whichever. So that's that. Okay. Uh, Frodo is saying height Y60, Y40, or N60 H9 Elite. Hello. Depending which like kind of um, look and size you want, they're all different sizes. The Y40 is a bit smaller. H9 is a bit bigger. And um, I think I would add another one in there, which isn't out yet. But Fantex uh, um, announced an NV7 case there. So NV7, that will be available anytime soon in um, February or something like that. So if you want to check out a nice case, go type into Google Fantex NV7 case. These are nice cases there to check out. Okay. Um, so... Uh, Building your 750 to 1250 creator build mid level. Can I upgrade this later, or should I plan a new build later on for high end? Depending, like what's high end and how much boost you do, but everything is upgradable in there, right? What I would do then is, if you plan to upgrade in the future, first thing you do is like get as much as high of a motherboard as you can in this kind of list of things. By the way, tomorrow. There's like the part three coming out that we have 2.5K to 3.5 or something like that K video. So you can check out the motherboard, upgrade that one first because uh, that will give you the most kind of upgrade path and you want to upgrade the motherboard later on, if that makes sense. And then you can always upgrade RAM. You can always upgrade CPU, cooler, GPU, all of that. So you can literally upgrade later on if you if you want to. So that's no problem. Do I recommend undervolting on 1490? Absolutely not. Anything undervolting, overclocking as a creator, and any of the CPU, GPU, RAM, not worth it. It's just going to hinder the performance, and uh, I wouldn't recommend doing that. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, let's see. Can you use RX 58 GPU for Premiere Pro H.264 Lite 4K video editing? Currently using GTX 1030, and I'm getting a second PC. Um, depending which GP, CPU you're using, I'd, I'd say if you go with Intel, any of the Intel CPUs that have an iGPU in there, I'd go with those because then, yeah, no problem there. Dunk is saying, any tips for ProArt motherboards? Um, I'm not sure what do you mean any tips by bro and motherboards by the way just when we're talking about pro and motherboards I've got one in here right now it's um, let's see if the testing's done actually where, where is it which one um, ah yeah I've got the HMI somewhere else um, the the pro art what I found out recently about pro art the interesting thing is pro art motherboards actually 
uh, are under the server section on Asus bots. So basically, if you are, let, let's say something happens with your Pro and Motherboard. I'm not sure if they've announced it yet or like how well this is, but I, I spoke to one of the Asus uh, like guys. And basically what happens is you the what, this is one of the best warranties that you can get with Asus bots, right? Because let's say something happens with your motherboard, they will send you a new one before you even send the old one back. So you'll get the new one. You can already start working straight away and then they'll sort it out later. You'll send the other one back first. So this is like an insane swap of um, like a motherboard. And um, when I find more information about it, I'm going to talk about this. But this is insane kind of way to absolutely top that. So that's uh, that's what I'd say. Any tips for pro art motherboards? I don't know. Um, um, Arc A380 and Arc 750 or Arc 770. What about them? Basically, the they have a lot of potential, right? All of them. And I think I've asked Intel to get the 750 and 770 samples and They've, they've hold back yet just because the A750 and 770, they don't have full support in Premiere Pro, as you can see on the A380 video. Um, so which means that basically the media engines that are on the GPU are much better than on the CPU, but they don't actually work together so well. So basically, we're going to have to wait when Adobe releases an update, then we can actually use them. But the DaVinci Resolve, Resolve up, um, utilizes all of that and has support for all of this so that's absolutely awesome and i think it's very very good if you look at the lower end gpus like the 3060 for example from nvidia and especially if you look at amd like the uh, gpus then they make a ton of sense and i can't wait to test them out yet but just if you're in the adobe kind of you know stratosphere then maybe wait for a little bit just to you have the support for that. Fantex G500A or Lancol 3 Mesh? Lancol 3 is much bigger than the G500A, if I remember correctly. Um, but depending on like your design preference, I think the Lancol 3 is pretty cool. Best cooler for 5950X, no budget, just the best. Arctic Liquid Freezer uh, 2 420 millimeter AIO. It's not even very expensive, but it's just one of the best. Um, EK has one of the best coolers now, one of the newer ones, the 360 millimeter ones with the new pump. Um, that's pretty good, but um, I'm not sure if this is available yet. Um, so, Carlos is saying here some tips to choose a motherboard for the 13700 non-k cpu i'm not going to oc thanks here's the thing if you're using the non-k in any of the still z motherboards for example or um the ones that have pl1 and pl2 limits unlocked basically then what happens is that 13700 will actually pull more power than the 13700k i've just finished uh, editing this video today who knows this is going to get you know to the end of the publishing schedule um if you know what i mean like how this works is you make videos and then you put add them to the publishing video and then something else comes up but then it kind of rolls so they i'm not publishing straight away when i do it just to have breaks sometimes i have a schedule ahead and then you're working and filling that schedule um ahead basically so the thing is, you might want to go with a 13700K because it might not be as expensive because you might need a better cooler for this 13700 um, if you're running a Z-series motherboard. If you are um, using some of the ones that have this 65 watts TDP in there or the PL2 limit or PL1 limit, I can't remember now which one is which, has a 65 watts. So if it drops down the wattage later on, then you'll be fine on... Um, any of the motherboards, basically. That's that's what I'd say. Okay. Um, 
should I buy a 3060 Ti or wait for the complete 40 series to come out? Um, here's the thing. Whenever you are upgrading or doing um, anything, if you find useful benefit for the product right now, then upgrade now. You don't need to wait for like the next series out. If you see like a benefit for it now, then this this is just the best one to get. Go for the 3060 Ti. Yeah, I think the 4060 Ti. There's rumors that that won't be like massively better. I don't know yet whenever that's gonna come out, but that's that. Hello, John, and greetings from Germany again. Sinlos. A lot of people watching from Germany. Nice to see you all. Um, I'm going to go and answer some of the questions in here. So I'm in dilemma. Should I wait for... I'll take this one off. Should I go for 13th gen K or non-K or should I wait for 14th gen? Currently have a 5950X with 3060, runs nice and cool even when rendering, but worry about heat since it gets a hot where I live. Well, then don't upgrade. You've got a pretty good system, Gary. I wouldn't upgrade at all. Um, answered this live. Here, I'll put the, the link for this as well. Okay, let's see where's the tech notice channel. Come on. All right, let's copy that one in here. Do, 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 do. Four sticks of DDR5. So for... Would you consider ASRock Sonic PGB760M with 13600K, ASRock Phantom Gaming Intel Arc A770 with four sticks of Corsair Vengeance DDR5, 5200 MHz, 64 gigabytes, a decent setup for strictly photo and video editing. Get two sticks. Don't get four sticks. Uh, you'll probably run the um, like XMP much easier. And get two sticks of 5,600 mega transfers per second. That would be the sweet spot. But yeah, it's 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 a cool ball that one. Jesse Rogers is saying, what's the best bang for buck bookshelf studio speakers? I'd have a look at some of the Edifier stuff. I'm using Edifier speakers. I'm quite happy with them, um, but they're they're pretty good. Now, I don't know like exactly all the audio hardware, so I'm not going to lie to you over there. Maybe look at some of the other things, but, you know, that's what, what, what I would do. Um So let's have a look. Do you have your benchmarks published somewhere? Which benchmarks website should we use for Premiere Pro video editing? I don't have my benchmarks uh, published anywhere apart from YouTube. So if you want to find them, you can find them on YouTube. Type in tech notice and then the gear you're looking for. 3900K, 700K, RTX 3050, uh, 3080, 3070, something like that. And then you'll find some Premiere Pro benchmarks in whatever you're doing. But I don't have them anywhere on any websites. Michael Wolf, the top G is here. Um, I hope you're having a great day as well. We are having a great day. Thanks very much. H MSI H610 good enough with Core i5-12400? Yeah, sure, but I don't think it supports XMP or memory overclock, so you might want to look into that if that is, that's that. 
air cooling a 3900k worth it yeah no problem have a have a look at my um uh, fractal torrent uh, north build sorry um we air cooled it and it's no problem you just have to stick to the limits and then you will be absolutely fine so best motherboard for thunderbolt pierre is saying and what is the best one any of the asus z 69790 motherboard with intel chips there will be the best for thunderbolt kind of compatibility what do you think about ryzen 7700x as a content creation i think it's a waste of time honestly i would not go with that as a content creation build I would go with a 13600K, a much better pick there. Um, that's a, that's what I would do. I think, yeah, it's 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 honestly 13600K is better than 12700K as well. By the way, I know I've said that, but I've, I've filmed the video about that, but I haven't actually um, published it yet. But that's that's what I would do. I wouldn't go with a 13 a 7700X. Um. Okay, there's some gaming only, so not interesting in that. Interested in that. Okay, here. Um, Nair is saying uh, whether the Asus Pro Z 790 Creator Wi Fi can run 128 gig DDR5 with good stability. Does its heavily marketed Asus RAM technology handle 128 gigs of DDR5 with stability unlike the most other DDR5 board? That's what the real pros want to know. Keep up the amazing work. So I am going to say that I have answered this live, but the other you know the same question here is what cpu are you running make sure you run the 13th gen cpu and if you want the most stable 128 gigabytes of ddr5 then go with um 3900k that was probably the best one 3900k as well, as well yeah sure a little bit better but 3900k that will be probably the best kind of cpu to get the most stable best memory controller to get 128 gigs of ddr5 working that's that's what i would do um yeah i could do this more format more often i think i just love to help people as well because when i was a creator well i'm still am and i remember when when i started all this and I had to find information. There was literally nothing available and no one just helped or anything. So I had to learn and study and test and spend thousands and thousands and thousands of hours and pounds on learning and trying to figure this out. Now, if I can give anything back to you guys, honestly, this is a game changer for everybody. Um, please don't go with the 7950X. 3900K is much better. Have a look at my 3900K or 7950X reviews. If you're doing video editing and you're using any H.264 and 5 Codex, it's absolutely uh, much, much better. Yes, Michael's absolutely right. Uh, it's not usually about getting 128 gigabytes working, but at which speeds? Um, which speeds do you want? 128 gigs is, is fine. You know, don't enable XMP or get the crucial RAM kit. I'm trying to find that crucial RAM kit there as well. Um, but it's basically non XMP, you just slotted in 5600, that's fine. And that's absolutely true as well. There's also 48 gigabyte modules coming up that um, allow for 96 gigabytes in dual mode config. That's absolutely right. Yes, there is, I think, was it MSI that's already enabled this in some of the motherboard BIOSes? I don't think there is these RAM kits out there yet, but DDR5, you can get actually single stick capacity up to 64 gigabytes. So in theory, you can get two sticks of DDR5 and run them at 128 gigabytes in capacity, which is just absolutely fantastic if you could do that. Jeffrey Bullock. Yeah, that's fantastic. Let's do it more often. I like, 
I like doing this more often. It feels like I'm actually interacting as well. So you're not just, you know, alone filming all the uh, videos all the time. Um, thanks, Wade. I am absolutely not interested in gaming, like, whatsoever. Uh, so good luck finding any gaming content on my channel. Um, I, I'm all full on creators and actually finding tools for people to who use this for work. That's what I'm passionate about. From which gen does Intel CPU has iGPU that helps with Premiere Pro? Actually, this is way back since like sixth, seventh gen. It's like way, way, way back. Intel QuickSync is like very old technology now. But I think it really starts to make massive impact from about 10th generation. Um, and then 12th gen is another complete kind of, uh, you know, game changer on the 12th gen you'll get much much better media engines inside there. Support a lot more codecs like H.265, 422, 10-bit. If you ever need that, then that comes from 12th gen. Um, in today's words, is my 5800X and 3070 16GB setup OK? Absolutely. If it works for you, you don't need to upgrade, OK? You need to upgrade only when you feel like, you know, you get maybe high workflows in something like that, then then upgrade. Don't upgrade until you feel like this PC is not working. Like right now, we are coming to a point where we're like, okay, we need to update our PC because our 3950X Ryzen with um, RTX 3070 Ti, 3090 Ti right now, we're using there was i'm swapping different gpus just to like see some of the feedbacks and like how they work but the 3090 ti it's got a few issues there as well but right now we are feeling that we need an upgrade just because um the way we're using and the workflow we're using is just sometimes so slow and i'd love to go with intel system now finally what i've been preaching to everybody here just because the igpu and the h264 and 5 codecs that will be much better. And the single core performance when working with some of the titles and text layers, that will be really, really good upgrade there. Yanis. Hello, Yanis. You again from Latvia. Salde Jumps. That's what I know in Latvian. <laughs> um, have you noticed the difference in performance between off-the-shelf external SSDs versus NVMe M.2 in an external enclosure. Yes, depending what you mean lag-wise, but uh, there is a huge difference whether you have... Um... Oh, no, actually. No, no, no. There, There isn't... Uh, sorry, I understood it, uh, your question wrong. There is no real difference there <clears throat> in terms of the, the speeds because... If you go with a 10 gigabit enclosure, for example, something like, let me have like this one here. You've got Orico 10 gigabit enclosure. You can get this for like $15, $20, something like that. And you can put an M.2 in there and then get up to 1000 megabytes per second read and write speeds. It won't be any faster than Samsung T5, for example. T samsung t7 but the good thing is if you ever need to upgrade your ssd for example you can put a higher capacity in there and then use the old one in your pc for example if you need or in another enclosure but then just having an external ssd will limit you that that will always be that size and then when the ssd breaks in there throw the whole thing away where's the end of two enclosure kind of um you know you can you can do a bit more than that with it Which would perform better? 3600K, 7700 non-X. What about future upgradability? I would go with 3600K anytime. I know there's maybe not as much future upgradability than 3700K and i9, but that's what what I would I would do. A greater motherboard versus a gpu upgrade here so basically 
I think a motherboard will give you more than a huge GPU upgrade, depending what you're doing, right? For photographers, absolute waste of time upgrading a GPU. Most likely, you're going to be absolutely fine, right? For video editors, in DaVinci Resolve, yeah, upgrade. Even sometimes in Premiere Pro, if you are bottlenecked by the VRAM, if you're doing a lot of multicam edits and maybe more than 4K, 8 gigabytes maybe not be enough, and then you need to upgrade that, right? But if you're using a lot of... Uh, SSD card readers or a lot of external SSDs, other things that you plug in, Thunderbolt enclosures, Thunderbolt docks, uh, fast connectivity, you're using a NAS, then upgrading your motherboard like this um, Z790 Pro out here, is, there's, there's nothing like it. It's just absolutely insane, right? Um, one second, I'll just see how this is doing here because I'll put the next export test on so now people can actually see what we're working on um, right now. Okay, it is done there. Let me get that one out of the way here. So, um, okay, that's done. Let me see what's the next one. I did this one. So we need to export that to Ultra HD. So we'll go export test okay we'll we'll do this one now next john is saying um the 730 series have actually igpu as well but um should you be able to set up the software to use those like using with Intel GPs? No, it doesn't actually work like that. As much as I'd like it to work, there's no like software support for that. That IGP on the 7000 series is basically just dead meat in there. It doesn't actually give any massive performance increase there. Best laptops for the as Mac in terms of performance and accuracy and screen type OLED. Well, unplugged, I don't think there is anything uh, the same kind of uh, performance as MacBook Pro because as soon as you unplug Windows laptop, boom, half the performance is gone out of the window. But if it is plugged in, there are uh, laptops that can beat it, especially now with the 13th gen laptops like with the 13 i9s massive amount of cores intel igpu plus nvidia rtx 4090s for example uh, they're quite expensive but you know pro art check out the pro art uh, some of the pro art um, laptops they would be cool so we're gonna just export that one which were the uh Playback export, Premiere Pro. Okay, this is YouTube. Okay, settings. Desktop. Let's do this. Oh, sorry, that one. And we'll send that to Media Encoder. We'll do that export test so I can make that going in the background. Do you think the new 4090 laptops have dual media engines? Yes. Uh, duplicate and duplicate. Okay. Wait, I can't see now. Okay, let's press play on this. <clears throat> let's see how long this is going to take then. Okay, if you're watching this live right now, hit that like button. Um, that makes a massive difference here on the content. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Um, So what's the best GPU around 300 euros? I would say RTX 3060. 
I'm not sure what the latest pricing is, but that one. It's all right, not bad for RTX 2060. Um, obviously, it has six gigabytes of VRAM, so you might be a little bit limited there, but for basic stuff, it will be fine. Thanks for sticking around, no problem, absolutely. Nice to, uh, nice to help content creators and not just talk about gaming PC builds and so on. Okay, let's go here again. So, Mark, um, I've actually done a door. I'm not sure if you've seen that in that video. Is there a question here? Probably not. Obtain issue there. Okay. Looks like we've answered all the questions there, which is good. So, um, people saying make a Discord for content creators. Do people like that? I'm not going to just make it if there's three people in there. Maybe we should we should do that. Um, well, we'll see. Twelve four hundred RTX twenty sixty for a low budget Premiere Pro After Effects combo. It's pretty good. It's good. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Um. Here's another thing I want to talk about. Let me see if I can get this up here to talk about in terms of um, iGPU support and that. If, By the way, if you're here and you want to answer some kind of questions or come live with me, uh, as you can see on the pinned comment, let me know and then we'll get you on the live uh, video. If you want to join live, that would be cool. And uh, there's only maybe 10... 12 minutes more that we're going to do that but then um then we'll 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 call it a day on this here um in a second i'll get this one out here while we get here nathan is saying do you have you ever built an inverted build any tips tricks warnings i think it could can make a lot of sense have a look at my msi build it's like um msi z690 godlike build absolutely bonkers build it says just bonkers on the thumbnail. Um, that is inverted a bit. Well, it's kind of 90 degrees, kind of not completely inverted, but it's rotated 90 degrees. But this was cool build. But the I.O. actually makes much more sense because the I.O. is much more accessible. If that makes sense. Uh, do you experience advice when upgrading RAM on the laptops? Um, I want to upgrade from 32 to 64. Just go with um, Kingston Theory Impact, for example, is a good one or crucial uh, when updating laptop RAM because they don't have XMP. Honestly, it just works. So I would go with these ones. That, that's that's fine. Should I go with Nook 12, i5 or i7 for Lightroom and Photoshop, please? I would go with i7 because CPU performance is very good. I mean, very important for you as a photo editor. So I would, I would, I would do that. Um, okay, okay. There is a building for Alias and it read to work. I have an EVJ Kingpin, not going to OC. I know, I know. A 3080 and 13600K torrent case. How big of a air cooler do I need if just working, no tests? Anything will be fine, honestly. Pretty much 
Well, the 13600K can pull up 244. Um, if you're just on a budget, right? Um, there's um, a thermal, what they're called, thermal, thermal, right? Peerless Assassins coolers, they're very, very good in that. But honestly, any mid range air cooler will be completely fine, not a problem at all. Is Windows 11 worth it? Yes. I think it is now. It's it's pretty much stable now. I think it's um, ironed out a lot of its um, you know wrinkles and kinks. So I would definitely go with that, especially if you're on Intel's thirteenth or twelfth uh, gen. Fifty seven hundred X is better for the venture resolve. A thirty sixty Ti is a bit better in terms of three um, D rendering actual speeds. Um, I'm not sure what's the latest support for A seven seventy, but but that's it. AK six twenty enough for i five twelve six hundred K. Oh, it's an overkill. Twelve six hundred K. You can put any potato on it, like any twenty dollar cooler. It'll be completely fine. The AMD 7, the 700 non nox versions, pretty good. Encoders, iGPUs, same level as the K-series for video editing, absolutely not. AMD iGPUs, they're, they're good in terms of like rasterization power for gaming, right? But for the video editing and uh, media engines, not worth it at all. Go with Intel. If you're doing video editing, I mean, this should be like a golden rule. You do video editing, go Intel. Video editing, go Intel. Um, thanks, dude. Yes, it's fine. 13600K AK620 is fine. Absolutely fine. So I want to show you this uh, last thing. If you have any last questions, like let me know. But I want to show you um, this here. Um, where is it? Okay. Okay, let's see. Let's get this one on here. Um, is that better? Yeah, okay. So what you can see here is actually um hardware decoding support, what I'm talking about, the IGPU and always pushing that. Um, that's what we can see here. So the good guys from Puget Systems have actually done tests here. And what you can see here is we've got H.264. We've got the bit depth and chromosome sampling. And then you can see if the GPU or iGPU can actually natively play it back or hardware play it back. So it's not actually on the CPU, like a software playback, but not the CPU cores played back. It play, gets it played back on the iGPU media engines. So if you look at H.264, there's only 8-bit 420 on Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve that gets played back in there. If you record on any of the external recorders or your camera records some of the other subsampling, any of the 10-bit or 8-bit, then as you can see, none of the you know, like CPU support that. Intel QuickSync, 11th, 12th, or 13th gen don't support that. Interestingly, 11th gen now is actually put in one of the like same uh, pots there as 12th gen, which it didn't used to be, but now they've updated and must support that as well. If we're looking at H.265, and here's where the big difference comes here, okay? Uh, on the right side here, this is Premiere Pro with less um, excess, I mean, less ticks, as you can see here. There's only a few things that is supported in Premiere Pro. 8-bit 420 H.265, okay? That's supported on everything. AMD Radeon, 5000, 6000, 7000 series, and then GTX 10 series, okay? Then we have RTX 2030, 40 series supported Intel 10th gen and 11th gen onwards. It's all supported. And it's the same on DaVinci Resolve. 
but if we're looking at other 8-bit codecs, then there's 8-bit 444 that's supported on the NVIDIA cards, right? 20, 30, 40 series. And then it's supported on the Intel QuickSync. But interestingly, Intel QuickSync on DaVinci Resolve, look at that. Everything is supported. Any 12-bit, 10-bit, 8-bit codec, H.265, it's all supported on NVIDIA 11th, 12th, and 13th gen, which is just absolutely insane, right? If you look at Premiere Pro, there's all Xs. Come on, Adobe. Can we get this working? This is ridiculous, right? So what we can see also is that the 10-bit 420 is supported on AMD cards here on DaVinci Resolve, I mean Premiere Pro, and then on DaVinci Resolve here as well. But then NVIDIA cards here, there's a few things that DaVinci Resolve supports a little bit more. What we can see, 10-bit 444 is not supported on AMD cards. But it's supported on the 20, 30, 40 series card, not on the Intel QuickSync 10th gen. Intel QuickSync 10th gen is just equal to any of the AMD cards, as you can see. It's the same ticks there. But then there's 12 bit 420, which is like some of the you know cameras or external recorders, what they can record. And you can see that the 10th series and NVIDIA cards can play this back. And then the 10th gen can't play back 444, 12-bit, but NVIDIA 2030-40 series GPUs can play this back. But the big thing is that 11, 12, and 13th gen eyes, GPU, and quick sync support, that's just supported in all of these. As you can see, this is just insane, insane support, what you can do that. But on Premiere Pro, we have only few things supported. There is the 10-bit 422, which is very usual codec that you can see from a mirrorless camera that isn't supported on anything but Intel QuickSync 11th, 12th, and 13th gen. So as you can see, the iGPU is a huge thing. If you didn't know that or if you don't know that already, that's huge. So I want to thank you, everybody, for watching this live stream. If you found helpful content here, if you found helpful information here, hit that like button. That actually makes a difference right now. And then we'll see you next time. If you want to ask any other questions for the next live streams and so on, then drop them in the comments in the, the comment section below um, after this video has been posted. And then we'll see you uh, next time. Okay. We'll see you soon.